watching the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and now, here's your host, Data Pioneer. Hello there, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and uh, today is the 26th of March, 2021. Hope, hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, today, what I thought I'd do is I uh, just saw a recent announcement for the release of Fedora Linux 34 Beta. It is out in beta now. Um, hasn't been released officially, but um, I grabbed a, an ISO of uh, Fedora Linux 34 Beta and uh, loaded it in my virtual box, and I thought we could uh, take a look at it together. Um, and with that comes GNOME 40, not GNOME 4.0, but GNOME 40, and so we'll take a look at that as well. And so here I am out on the fedoramagazine.org site where the announcement has occurred, and it talks about uh, the release of it, and it says that the next step is that the uh, planned release of the Fedora Linux 34 official release will be at the end of April. And so this is be the end of March. It gives them a month to get everything worked out, all the bugs worked out of it. Uh, so I, I thought I would load that in my virtual box and we can take a look at it. So I grabbed a link here from the Get Fedora 34 Workstation Beta, uh, clicked on that, and uh, when you click on that, it opens up to this page, and then you can go to for the Fedora 34 x86 64 DVD ISO beta here, and just click that download link, and um, and that will take you out to the download, and you can download it as well, just like I did. All right, so let's uh, get out to uh, VirtualBox, and uh, so let me bring up VirtualBox. I've already loaded the ISO in. I just haven't brought it up yet. And so when I bring it up, here I am. It's powered off. Uh, let's go through the settings real quick. Uh, and I won't bore you with loading that up. But um, here on the uh, system, I given, I've given it 4096 megabytes of RAM. I've turned off the floppy disk. I've moved the hard disk up in the boot order so that when we do install it, um, it will boot up on the hard disk, not the optical. Uh, I, on the display, have given it 128 gigs of, or megs rather, of video memory. Uh, VMS VGA, I left it at that. For storage, I have loaded the Fedora Workstation Live already, and it's ready to start up. Uh, for network, I've bridged the adapter so that it will come up on the same network as my host machine, and then for USB, uh, it's USB 3.0. All right, so let's click OK here, close it, and I'm ready to launch. So let's go ahead and start this and uh, switch and let it come up. I'm looking forward to taking a look at uh, Fedora 34 Beta and especially GNOME 40. I really enjoyed uh, GNOME 3.x, and so... Uh, 40 should be a pretty good. Why they jumped from 3 to 40, I'm really, not really sure. Uh, but they've changed their uh, naming schemes for GNOME, apparently. And so we'll take a look at that. So it's booting up now. And um, get out there. I'll put a link to the uh, download page uh, in the show notes so that you have it and um, you can just click on that and load that in as a virtual machine or if you want to go ahead and install it on bare metal just make sure you don't make it your production machine because it is still in beta. All right here it comes and it does come up the full screen 1920 by 1080 that's really good and here we are so let's see welcome to Fedora and so rather than try Fedora, I'm just going to go ahead and do the jump straight to the install to hard drive. And so let me click on that and um, let's get this thing rolling. All right, so here we go. should be coming up here momentarily. And there we are. So this is the typical Fedora um, installer. I believe this is the uh, Calamaris installer, actually. All right, so we got English in English. Let's click Continue. Uh, so this is uh, unavailable or unstable pre-release of software. We know that. I don't, I'm not worried about that. And uh, so let's go ahead. I want to proceed. 
It's good that they do warn you about it, though, so you don't make it your production machine, thinking it's, you know, final release software. Everything else is good here. Time date, time and date for America and New York for me. Keyboard English US is good, but the installation destination, let me click on that. And let me select the uh, ATA VBox hard disk and select Done. And uh, so let's see if that took. And um, if it doesn't, let me select it again. Not sure why that uh, makes you do that twice. But uh, now, now it should come up and check it and say that it's good to go. Automatic partitioning selected. Probably because I didn't tell it what kind of partitioning that I wanted. And it just assumed I wanted automatic since I went through it twice. All right, so let's begin the installation. Select that. And uh, here we go. So it's creating the BTRFS or the Butterfuss or BTREFS, however you want to pronounce it, on the dev SDA uh, partition, SDA2 rather. And um, this is going to take a while. Uh, it shouldn't take very long, but when it's completed, I'll go ahead and stop the video here or pause the video. And when it is finished, I'll come back. Okay, so the installation is completed, and uh, that took about 10 minutes. Uh, took a little bit longer than I anticipated, but uh, still 10 minutes, not too bad. All right, so it is completed. It says it is complete, and I noticed up here that it says it's a pre-release testing that just lets you know, um, you know, in writing, this is not for production. Um, and some of the things that we normally do, or I normally recommend people to do when they install a new OS, even in a VM, is to fully update it, uh, run updates, but I'm not going to do that because this is a beta, uh, and um, and we are expecting to have issues anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and click the Finish Installation button and reboot this thing. It should reboot. Uh, if it doesn't reboot, uh, I'll reboot it. And it looks like it just came right into it uh, with the finished installation. Let me go ahead and reboot it, though. And so let me do a power off and restart. Restart. And as soon as it comes up, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and... Um, actually, it probably shouldn't have done that now that I think about it, because when... Uh, I should have gotten a screen to uh, set up the account. I didn't see that. And so um, let's see. Maybe it'll do it this time. Because I haven't set the account up yet for myself or for root. And uh, given it a password for either one of those, which is a little interesting. Because we did install it. We, we're not running a live version here. So maybe a, maybe a restart was good. Okay, so it's coming up now, and uh, so let's see if we get that screen to, um, here we go. All right, so we've got a setup screen, and welcome to Fedora 34, and so let's click Start Setup, and uh, I'm going to leave Location Services on, but I could, could turn that off. Automatic Problem Report, I'll leave it on for now. Um, even in a VM, if um, you know I'm beta testing this thing, I want to leave that on anyway. Let me click Next. I'm going to skip the online accounts though and so let me put in my full name and the username is Data Pioneer and I'm not going to, you can click the enterprise login and if you're connected to a network uh, at a corporate network, uh, oops something went wrong uh, I'm not quite sure what happened here, let me go ahead this is beta so anticipate problems uh, so let me go ahead and close it and power it off and uh, it's off now so I'm going to go ahead and restart it um, yeah this is to be expected this is a beta um, maybe I should have clicked next and gone by past that waited too long so I got a, uh, a failure of some kind next time I won't do that so we'll see what happens Okay, so we did a restart. Fedora 34 is coming back up again. 
And let's see if we can get through the setup screen this time. Like I said, this is beta release, so, you know, can anticipate some problems. I'm not going to judge it on on, um, on this issue. If it were a final release, yeah, I would. It looks like it's uh, coming up now. So we should get back to that reset uh, or the setup screen. Um, here we go. So let's start the setup. And leave those alone. Click next. Let's skip this. Put in my name. Data Pioneer. Click next. Password. Confirm it. Next. All done. Start using Fedora. Okay, so we're in. And this is the um, screen that we're getting here. But I uh, don't see any activities button yet, so let's. it may not have completed um, getting settled in yet. So we'll just wait a few more seconds, see if we get that activities button to come up. Um, shouldn't take too long if it's going to develop. Um, all right, and let's see, here we go. So we've got the activities button. I'm not going to take the tour. I'm going to say no thanks. So let's do a right click on the screen here and uh, change the background. I may leave it the way it is, but I just want to see what we have available. All right, so this is the uh, file manager for GNOME, GNOME 40. And um, so here are the available backgrounds. That Problem occurred again. Here are the available backgrounds. Look, they look pretty good. Um, got about uh, oh, 15 of them, maybe. Um, the one we have is pretty nice. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. You could click select this one. I believe this one is the the default that you see on most uh, of the announcements for Fedora, Fedora 34 coming out. I like the one we have, so I'll just leave it the way it is. All right, and so let me go ahead and close that. Let's right click again. Let's go on to display settings and see for the display itself. It looks like it is 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9 resolution, scaled at 100%. Um, I don't have a mouse. I've got a mouse, but no touch pads. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to bother with that. Everything seems to be moving along pretty well. Um, for date and time, we had the correct date and time. We can click on it and see what we have. It says that it's... Uh, 26 March 2021 at 12.02. EDT, New York, United States. That's correct. It is uh, daylight savings time here. I want to change that to AM, PM. So we get that AM, PM change up there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to select the automatic time zone. All right. And so turn that on. All right. So for power, uh, I am going to tell it not to blank the screen. And we'll say never for now. And... Everything else looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and close this. And so let's go up to the activity screen. And for activities, ah, so when I click activities, it's a little bit different than what I expected. Uh, normally, you've got a vertical uh, activities off here on the right-hand side. It looks like this is horizontal. You can type in the search window here, um, but you can, um, looks like, Go over and select left and right. So if I go down here and let's get Firefox up on the main screen. We'll check to see what version we have. And um, so I bump that up to full screen. And if I go over here to the pancake and click help and about Firefox, let's see what we have. Looks like we have um, Firefox browser 86.0. That's probably the latest version. All right. And so let me just go to my website. See if that comes up okay. This is my blog. And yeah, it looks like it's coming up. Yep. 
looks fine. I'm going to disable that. And if I go out to a blog article, let's go to the blogs link. Looks like it's moving right along. Here's my market watch stock market simulation game and JSTOC article and my latest blog article. That looks fine. So everything looks great here. Um, all right, so if I go back up to activities and see that it's on the main screen, if I take and drag this over to the next screen, let's see what happens. Ah, okay, so it looks like I can move back and forth that way. Um, if I do an alt left and right, it's not moving that way. So I've only got one thing going. I've got two screens going. So I can either go over here to this one and then click and bring it up, or I can come back to activities and go over to this one and click in that and bring up a new window. So it looks like it's a left and right. And so what it looks like to me is in the GNOME 40 setup, it looks like it's really designed for touchpad um, rather than for keyboard and mouse, to be honest. And so, so that you can drag it over just by using finger uh, finger touches on the on the screen. Probably, if I had to guess, it's three fingers swipe or two fingers swipe. One of those. But I am on Firefox, and so now if I bring up another one, say if I bring up the file manager here, um, I've got the file manager open in over top of the browser. If I want to click on activities and then bring that over. I can bring that over to the next window. And so if I click over here, I am now I've got a third window that's come up. All right. And if I click here, it opens uh, the file manager in um, on the second on the second workspace. OK, so we do have the different workspaces um, clicking here. And so I noticed that this came up. I've got this little window here, um, scroll area. So that gives me the the uh, new desktop. This gives me the file manager, and this gives me the uh, Firefox. All right. And so if I click on that, uh, if I go click it again, so I get this back. So that's great. So I've got the ability to do it more easily here from this window at the top rather than having to click the activities button every time or scroll across by clicking here. It's a little hard to grab, by the way. But... Um, that's a nice feature. It's a nice addition. I like the horizontal scrolling of the uh, of the new workspaces, to be honest. So let me go ahead and click that and take a look at this. Um, I am going to enlarge that a little bit. Okay, expand it just a little bit and bring it in the center. And um, And so if I click on other locations, and let's see if it grabs my Samba shares. It does. So I've got a Raspberry Pi here with uh, some Samba shares and CIFS uh, common internet file system installed. If I double click it, it brings up my file store vol1. If I double click that, it is uh, anonymously connected. So if I click connect, yeah, so I'm able to bring that up just fine. Uh, if I click on, let's say, uh, downloads here all right so i've got my downloads uh, coming up so this is a um, spinning hard drive a western digital black and an enclosure a two bay enclosure and i've got uh, open media vault set up on the raspberry pi and i can it's basically a nas and so i'm able to touch it though uh, in the fedora 34 workstation uh, even in beta with not a not a problem so it looks great uh, so let's go back to home documents nothing there obviously pictures nothing there and um, all right so looking good and let me go ahead and close this all right so let me go back out to activities uh, let's see what else we have let's click on the uh, show applications and so here we are we've got boxes we've got cheese we've got clocks uh, we've got contacts uh, Got the Office, LibreOffice Suite, so LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Impress, and Writer. Let me click on Writer Community and bring that up and see what version we have. Okay, so I can expand that as well. And let's go up to Help and About LibreOffice. 
looks like this is LibreOffice um, 7.1.0.3, really late version uh, in Fedora 34. Now, that's the thing about Fedora. Fedora uh, is kind of like a rolling release, if not a rolling release. You get the latest and the greatest. Um, I think it's not considered a rolling release distro, if I'm wrong. Correct me. But you do get, uh, it's a lot more than... Uh, more up to date than say CentOS, which is now gone, but being replaced or has been replaced by Alma Linux. I haven't taken a look at Alma yet, but uh, with Alma Linux, you're going to get the uh, downstream uh, Red Hat, and um, although it's supposed to be upstream, but uh, with Fedora, you're going to get uh, um, probably more the, more the later versions of software, and so that's what we, we're looking at here. This is one of the latest, if not the latest, for LibreOffice. All right, looking good. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's go back to um, here and get back in. And so now we are at Maps and Settings. I click on Settings. That takes me to Network, Connected Wired here. Bluetooth, I don't have any Bluetooth devices. For background, I already showed you that. For notifications, we have the usual players here. For applications, we're looking at that, and we, we see what those are. Uh, for privacy, we can turn privacy on or off here. Let's go back. Uh, for online accounts, we looked at that. Sharing, click that. We can see here that we can share. Uh, we can turn file sharing on or off. Screen sharing on or off. Media sharing on or off. They're, they're all off right now. So file sharing. Uh, for Fedora, uh, you need to turn that on for sharing and then come down, for instance, for screen sharing or file sharing, I can turn that on or off. Wired Connected, turn that on. All right, so now I'm sharing, uh, file sharing in Fedora uh, 34. Sound, we have uh, system volume, system sounds here, uh, balance and input, output. Uh, for power, uh, I showed you that earlier where I uh, suspended the uh, blank screen. For displays, I showed you that as well. Keyboard and mouse, uh, we've got a mouse, I have no touchpad. do have a keyboard though, and um, so here I can get in there and change that out if I want to. Printers, uh, it actually did detect my HP DeskJet 2600 series all-in-one printer. It's a printer, scanner, and fax machine. For removal media, uh, I can tell it what to do here. For CD audio, ask you know, ask what to do. I can change that. Say do nothing, or open folder, or other application, or set rhythm box as the uh, default. Um, for a music player, I can do the same. I'll make that rhythm box. For photos, I can tell it to do nothing or ask what to do. I'll do that. And for software, I can tell it to do nothing, ask what to do. That's what I will do. And then color, uh, and we have region and language, accessibility uh, for the uh, hearing impaired, sight impaired, that kind of thing. Users, here's my user here. I can unlock the account and, and work with it. For default applications, I can tell it my web browser to be the Firefox by default. Normally I go with Brave. I haven't installed that in a VM. Don't intend to. For mail, I uh, don't have anything installed there apparently. For calendar, um, I'll leave it the way it is. Music, rhythm box, video, I'll leave that at videos. And for photos, I'll leave that at image viewer. Date and time, I, I did look at that already. And about, uh, this is Fedora. Uh, for hardware model, uh, we've got the Inotech GMBH virtual box, obviously. I'm running a Intel Core i3 7th generation CPU at 3.9 gigahertz, and I'm running the um, LLVM pipe uh, graphics because we are in a VM. I've got a 26.8 gigabyte uh, disk capacity here for this particular VM. I'm running 64-bit operating system, and I am running Wayland here for window windowing system. Now, I am recording this on my host machine, which is a Farron OS uh, and I'm running uh, Simple Screen Recorder. I understand, though, that uh, Simple Screen Recorder does have issues with Waylon. Hopefully, they'll get that fixed at some point. Let's go ahead and close this. Let's get back in and get back up to 
text editor um, and the tour for utilities. Let's see what we have. We have system monitor. We have disk usage analyzer. We've got calculator. We've got disks. We've got image viewer, document viewer, screenshot. And uh, let's take a screenshot here of the, um, of the screen. And let's see if it'll uh, come up so we can save this. And yeah, I'm going to do uh, Fedora 34 screenshot. All right, save that in my pictures folder or directory. And so it's saved now. And so if I come back in here, and let's go back to utilities. If we take a look at image viewer, um, and so if I click on open, and there it is. Let's click on open here, and there it is. And let's bring it up to full screen. And here we are. We're, we're looking at it now in full screen. All right. Okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get out of this. And uh, all right, let's let's leave it. Leave the full screen. Close this application altogether. I'm not particularly keen on this particular uh, screenshot. I like the uh, uh, screenshot, but uh, I like uh, I think it's called uh, spectacle. I like that one better. Let's go ahead and close without saving. For activities, let's get back into where we were utilities and I believe we're at the terminal so for terminal let me bring that up and let me do a uh, bump this up a little bit so you can see it and um, let's run a uname a on this one and it says that we're running Linux Fedora 5.11.3-300.fc34.x86-64 kernel uh, and it is so it is 64-bit kernel. Let's do a DF uh, LH, and uh, we can see here that the uh, structure of the installed file system. Um, we are here at um, for dev SDA2, which is the root directory. We're only using 14%. Then we've got a home directory and boot, which is uh, uh, does not appear to be an EFI boot. Just a regular um, master boot record boot. All right, and so let's do. Uh, is HTOP installed? It is not installed. Well, I'm going to run, clear the screen, clean up the terminal. Let's do a free uh, dash m for memory, and take a look at that. And so right now we we've, we've been playing around in this a little while. We've got four gigs of RAM, which I set up initially. We've only used 1.6 gigs. We've got uh, 259 free. 119 shared, 2056 buffered, and I've got 1960 megabytes available. We have a uh, four gig swap. We've only used six megabytes. So um, let's do a uh, sudo dnf install htop. See if we can install htop. Put in my password. And let's go ahead and install htop here and uh, bring up htop and take a look at that real quick it's going to have less memory uh, it's going to show more memory usage because htop uses memory as well and um, so it uh, should be installing htop here as soon as it gets through the uh, uh, updating the repos and the cache this is a, a virtual machine it's a little slow for some reason not quite sure what's going on but um, we'll see if this comes through. If not, I'll just cancel it out. And there we go. And so do you want to install it? I'm going to say yes. Let it go ahead and install it. And um, for those folks who are familiar with the install process, it does a transaction test. It says it's installed. And so let me go ahead and uh, clear the screen. And let's bring HTOP up. And there we go. So here's HTOP. It is using quite a bit of memory, but that's because we've been working with it. Uh, if I did a restart, I'm not going to do that. But if I did, I'm sure this would come down probably to around 1 gig or probably under that. Hopefully closer to like 700 megs. 
All right, so let's take a look. We've got 148 tasks, uh, 435 threads, one running. Load averages are not bad at all. This is a due core, so anything below 2 is good. So this is 0 0.31, 0 0.42, and 0.52. Load average for um, 1 minute, 5 minutes, and 15 minutes. We've, we've been up uh, 20 minutes and 25 seconds. Everything's looking pretty good here in HTOP. And so I'm going to go ahead and get out of it. And so let's go ahead and clear the screen and and let's exit the terminal actually. And so let's go back in. Let's go back into here and for utilities and see what we have. We've got two pages of utilities. Help, characters, problem reporting, logs, and fonts. Okay, so we've got one page here and then one page over here as well. System monitor, let's pull that up and take a look at it. We didn't look at that. Uh, if we go to full screens, it's the system monitor here. So we can monitor um, the system itself and take a look at it. This is a VM, so it's not a big issue. Um, close that. All right, let's get back into activities and move on from utilities. Now we're on videos. Let's take a look at that. So for videos, um, this is the video player. I don't have anything to play, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. I believe this has um, may not have VLC Media Player installed. I don't see it, so we would have to install VLC Media Player. I don't see a uh, software installer here. Um, let me go ahead. We've got weather, so you can set up your weather if you want to. I'm not going to do that right now for your location, and I do have location turned on. Here's HTOP now that we have it installed. Um, so let's see if VLC Media Player is installed. I don't see that. Software Installer. There's the Software Center uh, for GNOME. And let's browse the software. Here it is. Let's bring it up to full screen. This is GNOME Boxes here. Is the featured editorial pick. Got Notes, Scribus, uh, PDF Mod, GNU Cache. Um, let's click on that. And GNU Cash is a home banking and uh, budgeting software, open source software package. Let me go ahead and install it. And, uh, and I'll fire it up and then I'll close it down. But I'll show you that you can install software from the uh, Software Center in uh, GNOME version 40. So far, GNOME 40 looks pretty pretty plain Jane like it normally does, but uh, I kind of got used to it. One thing I will notice about GNOME 40 over GNOME 3.x is rounded corners on the windows. Um, so it, even though it has the plain look, you do have the rounded corners, um, which I like better, actually, than, uh, than the other one. It was all squared off on the corners. All right, so it's installing uh, GNU Cache now. And this is gonna, may take a few minutes to install and uh, but we're going to be patient and we're going to let it go through the process here we go it's installed it says oops it ran into a problem that's okay and it may have installed it it may not so we'll take a look we'll launch it and see if it comes up it does and so it is coming up to launch and I'm not going to set up any accounts or anything but it looked like it installed it even though it said it ran into an issue uh, I'm going to go back uh, and see what else we have here. We've got recommended productivity applications, Evolution Mail, not not keen on Evolution Mail. In fact, I've installed MailSpring now for my default um, in the browser, but I do have Proton Mail. I do have, Evo uh, not Evolution, but I do have MailSpring set up for my Gmail account separate from my Proton Mail. LibreOffice Writer, Impress, uh, GNU Cache, Geary, and recommended games are here. And uh, so we do have an audio video section. So we'll let that develop. We have Audacious, uh, MuseScore, uh, Quadlabet, and I've used Quadlabet in the past. Very nice uh, uh, music uh, management program. Okay, G Radio for uh, internet radio. Uh, we have Brazero, we've got Audacity, a lot of people don't like it. I'm, I'm preferable to Clementine Music uh, over uh, Audacity. Let's click on that. Let's install Clementine. 
And let's see if that installs without a problem. We got an oops on the last one. Let's see if this makes it through without running into an error. Um, hopefully on the uh, finished product uh, in a, at the end of April, we won't get any oops after installations. All right, so we do have that. Let's do a launch. Didn't get any oops that time. And so when I click on launch, let's see if it comes up. Yeah, here we go. All right, so Clementine did come up okay. And so let's go ahead and close out of that and go back. Okay, so um, here's the rest. I'm not going to go through all of these guys. There's way too many of them. But you can see you've got quite a bit of stuff to pick from. Then you've got games here. I'm not a gamer, so I'm not even going to touch it. You've got developer tools. Let's see what we have for that. You've got quite a bit here. Genie. Um, you've got DB browser for, um, for, for SQLite. You've got, um, let's see, code. Um, do we have VS Code? Let's see if we have VS Code here. That's the latest and greatest thing going. I don't see VS Code um, unless I'm blind. I don't see it, and uh, but we could sort. We could probably search for it and see if it's there, but not in this window apparently. Uh, I've got uh, communications and news. Quite a few things here, folks. Uh, Wireshark. I mean, we've got more than take you know time I have to go through all of it. But I'm just going to scroll down, let you look and see if anything catches your eye. Um, all right. And so graphics and photography. Uh, we've got Blender. We've got Krita. Now Krita is one that uh, I'm not going to install it here, but I prefer Krita over GIMP actually, and so I would be installing that. But you do have GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program. Um, Darktable, you got Flameshot. I've been using Flameshot very successfully. Scribus and uh, some others. So I've got quite a few things here to pick from, to choose from. Let's go back. Got Education and Science, Productivity. Now I see what's interesting to see what we have there. We do have the uh, TextWorks. We do have uh, Kite. We do have PDF Arranger, which is very nice open source uh, application. We've got Home Bank. If you're not keen on uh, GNU Cache, you can use Home Bank instead. It is open source as well. Uh, let's see here. Got uh, LibreOffice Calc. Uh, we've got the uh, Electrum Bitcoin. Not quite sure what that is. All right. So we've got add-ons and utilities. For utilities, let's see what we have. And then that should wrap it up. So we've got uh, GNU Emacs. We've got Kate. Nice uh, text editor and code editor. Um, Kwrite. And we've got uh, Variety. We've got um, KeePassXC if you're into password management. I use... Uh, RoboForm through the browser, so I don't need it. Cleopatra, if you want to uh, do encryption, set up your uh, RSA keys. Uh, you can do that through Cleopatra, and uh, you can do full disk encryption using Cleopatra as well. All right, so we've um, got Arc, and we've got a lot of other things here. So we've got quite a few things to choose from even in uh, utilities. And so this is kind of a full suite here. So let's get out of that and get back in. I'm not quite sure if we're done with this or not. Uh, for videos, whether we did we did all of that. New cache is now showing up. Clementine is showing up. And the Project M Pulse Audio Visualization showed up. I'm not quite sure why. All right, so across the top, we do have the activities, which we looked at, of course. We do have the search window here. We do have the uh, conky here for date time. So it's got an oops here. We've got the notification. We can do not disturb if we want. We've got a calendar. And we've got uh, date and time. Time in hours, minutes, and I don't have it set for seconds. If you come across here to the end, if you click on that, this particular uh, window shows you the uh, audio that we are wired connected. You can get the settings here. You can lock and you can do power off. So I'm going to go ahead and power off the machine. 
and uh, power off and get back to the desktop. And that was uh, Fedora 34, um, a review of Fedora 34. I like what I saw. I thought it was very, I'm going to get out of VM, get back to my Farron OS machine. Um, that was very uh, responsive, I thought. Uh, Farron 34 did have a couple of oops, a couple of errors, but that's to be expected. It is beta. Uh, GNOME 40, uh, didn't see a lot of changes, but I did see one I really liked, which was the horizontal um, uh, workspaces. I did see the rounded corners on the windows. I did like that as well. But besides that, everything looked fairly the same Gnomish look, even in File Manager. And so this has been a quick system setup and product review of Fedora 34 just released, with the final version being released uh, currently projected for the end of April. Gnome 40, take a look at that, folks. Uh, go out. I'll put a link to the download down below in the video. Um, show notes, and so you can grab it and Give it a spin for yourself. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a good day. Take care. See you out there. Bye-bye.